Okay, today's video, I want to talk about the importance of addressing routines, rituals, rules, rigidity. Oftentimes in recovery, we really dwell on like the unrestricted eating part and the resting part. And then that kind of like blanket of routines gets overlooked. And I feel like maybe that's where we need to start with routines that we get locked into and really, really rigid rules that we have a hard time breaking. What I see happen, I'm pretty sure I was guilty of this myself at the beginning of recovery as well, is it was like I was eating unrestrictedly, but I was doing it in a very routine-like way with a lot of rules still attached, if that makes sense. And I know that seems like, well, how can you be eating unrestrictedly, but also with routines? Um, how that would have looked for me was like, um, you know, let's say I started eating bagels and cream cheese. I was like, oh my gosh, I love bagels and cream cheese. So good. Yum. I'm eating all these bagels and cream cheese. This is so great. Yum. And what happened is the next day I'd have to go to the same place. <laughs> I have to do the same kind of bagels with the same amount of cream cheese around the same time of day. But I was eating unrestrictedly. Like I was eating all the bagels I wanted. And then the next day I had to do the same thing. And then before I knew it, a week had passed by and I'd been doing the same thing with bagels and cream cheese. And I got locked into this new routine and I was really rigid around it. And having a bagel at 4 p.m. with cream cheese was a no-go. That wasn't going to happen. No, 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 no. Okay, so I think, again, people will get frustrated and it seems or feels kind of like you're hitting dead ends or I've talked a lot about, I actually haven't talked about it in a while, but kind of like that whack-a-mole game, right? Where it's like, you feel like you're putting one fire out and then another one comes up. And then, the, but what? I thought I was like, oh, I'm so frustrated. I feel like I am eating unrestrictedly, but why does my brain still feel so fixated and con like consumed with how and what I'm eating and when I'm eating it? And it, it is just still so frustrating. It feels like you're not getting anywhere. And so my advice to you is to look at what, first of all, like what routines did you come into recovery with? And obviously we need to break those down immediately. I always say when you're starting recovery, the more you can flip everything upside down on its head, like everything about your day prior to going into recovery needs to look different. Even, even as specific as like what order you get up and get ready in the morning. So, you know, do you first get up, brush your teeth, wash your face? I don't know. Um, get in the shower, get dressed. Well, all of that has to change because the first thing you need to be doing is eating, right? And so for me, it was like, okay, so let's see. Hmm. The candy bar. That's what we'll start with. We'll start with the candy bar. That's very different than brushing my teeth first. And then after the candy bar, I'll go straight down to the kitchen and have breakfast. And then after breakfast, I'll go upstairs and get dressed. And that was different because typically it'd be brush teeth, get ready for the gym, work out, then have breakfast. Do you see how flipped and different that became? And so when I started changing routines drastically and also in favor of eating and resting, it was amazing how I started feeling a shift in my brain really quickly. Like, you can ask my husband, within a few days of me going into like full on recovery mode, he sensed a difference. I think at first maybe he was skeptical, kind of like this feels, this seems different than what she's done in the past. This seems like she's really going for it. And within a, maybe a week or so, I think he sensed like something's different about you. Something about this recovery is different. You seem like you're really going to do it. And I was like, I am. My brain is changing. Like something's different. And I think it's because I broke down those routines and I allowed space for more food and all varieties and all amounts at all times of day because I didn't have these specific things I had to do, right? Another example would be like walks. You know, I had to walk at certain times during the day and that interfered with being able to eat unrestrictedly. And so I had to completely eliminate obviously all movement, which made me break that routine down. And then I had all this time in the day that freaked the crap out of me because what I was typically doing was walking instead of eating when really all I wanted to do was eat instead of walk, but my fear of weight gain allowed me to, or just enabled me to be able to do that, to actually stay home and eat. And so recovery means and committing to recovery means doing that very thing. The thing you don't want to do is actually giving yourself that space, moving out all your routines, clearing your, clearing your day as much as possible. And for sure, getting rid of all the eating disordered things, and then allowing yourself to have that ability to actually honor that mental hunger that you've been suppressing for so long. And what you'll find is you do that, what you thought was a lot of mental hunger is going to skyrocket and feel very overwhelming. People will go into recovery and they'll say, Becky, I don't get it. Like I went into recovery because the mental hunger was driving me insane. Now, like since working with you and me 
really committing and really like increasing what I'm eating and cutting out all exercise. Now my mental hunger is like way out of control. Like it's terrifying. I don't, the more I eat, the hungrier I get and the more obsessed I am with food and the more I can't do anything other than just thinking about and wanting to eat food. It's like, yeah, that's welcome to recovery. That's it. So the way that you get into that though, and I, I know that this, the way I just explained that probably if you're listening and you're not there, you're like, yeah, that's exactly why I'm not doing that. Trust me, I promise you it's worth it. And you do have to go through that. So it's inevitable that that process does need to happen. You need to allow it to happen. You need to commit to allowing it happen to happen. So when it gets hard, you still do it. And all of that starts with, I'm telling you from the moment you wake up in the morning, you're flipping your whole routine upside down. And you're not allowing yourself as you progress to recovery to get locked into new rigid rules, routines, behaviors around certain foods. So going back to that bagel analogy, not an analogy example, excuse me. Going back to that ba bagel example, I had to identify and notice, huh, that's interesting. Just within a matter of a few days now, I'm all like obsessed about how and when I eat these bagels. All right, so today, you know, I've noticed it. And today we're getting different kinds of bagels. I'm going to a different place and we're going to do it in the afternoon. And then if I was like, no, but I really want it in the morning, then I'd be like, okay, we're going to do it in the morning and we're going to go get some in the afternoon. So you have to constantly stay on top of your brain wanting to latch on to things. A lot of this stems from, you know, a lot of OCD behaviors, people that oftentimes will also struggle with when you have an eating disorder. Almost everyone I worked with has that um, struggle that they have to constantly kind of battle against. But you have to kind of understand how your brain naturally wants to work until you're fully recovered. That'll feel different. But when you're still struggling with these behaviors that are very disordered and you're trying to break them, your brain's going to try to like latch on to something that feels safe some kind of new routine that feels safe and you can't let it. And you have to keep breaking it down. You have to keep challenging it, being aware of where that's coming up and then making sure that you get rid of it. So that's my message to you today. Have a good day.